I welcome you all to the second talk of the first lecture series on cutting edge science organized by Sir Pune. Uh, the purpose of the lecture series is to make technocrats community engage more with basic science. I think being in the corporate we know that uh, we get to attend lectures, participate in events predominantly related to technology, technology products, applications. But uh, cutting edge science, basic science, fundamental science. I think very hardly any kind of scope for uh, any exposure to that. So this is an opportunity for that and uh, the objective is to how to make corporates engage with basic science a lot more. And as I explained in the previous talk, what is happening in US and China uh, is very consciously the two groups are coming together. And so we thought what we could do to enable starting from Pune, if the Pune industry corporate group and the, we have premium institutions in Pune, if you could, they could be brought together. Now, astro, the today's topic being astronomy and astrophysics have contributed greatly to the technology that are used in everyday life. You know, you may be surprised, I'll give you two examples. One is this uh, CCD or charge coupled devices popularly known as digital cameras that you use in your mobile phone. That was developed for capturing astronomical images actually and later it was used in Hubble Space Telescope and it was uh, discovered by Wilfred Boyle and George Smith. And they were awarded Nobel Prizes in 1976. And you know that the first uh, commercial venture, the company that put this technology to use in digital camera, it was Kodak. But Kodak didn't pursue this, so that's a different story. Now the second example I can give you is the you know, computerized tomography or what you call a CT or CAT scanners, very wi widely used in the medical field. Now that's again is a technique which developed through in the field of astronomy and the technique of aperture synthesis that was developed by radio astronomer and Nobel laureate Martin Ryle in 1974. Now India and particularly in Pune, we are very fortunate to have some great science institutions, ISR, Ayuka, and of course, Institute of Science in Bangalore and TIFR. And all these institutions have doing excellent work. They have internationally acclaimed uh, eminent professors in all various disciplines. Okay. Now, as I said, uh, the whole purpose of the lecture series to how these institutions, they are not had opportunity to work with the corporate and corporates not had a exposure to these institutions. So the purpose is towards that. Now in the uh, previous lecture, Dr. Seema Sharma talked about how much we understand of universe and uh, through the standard model of physics by which we understand matter. But she also talked about how much we don't understand of dark matter, dark universe, dark energy, antimatter, which are all still puzzles the eminent scientists are working on. Now, uh, while particle physicists like Dr. Seema Sharma use LHC as a tool to discover new particles which could ultimately help in solving some of these puzzles, astrophysicists look to the vast expanse of the universe and make observations. As we again, uh, you know, talked about last time, the visible light is a very narrow range of the electromagnetic spectrum and uh, you don't get to see all that is really around because of the narrow spectrum that you are exposed to. So the uh, uh, astrophysicists look for, I mean, use the whole range of electromagnetic spectrum, starting from radio wave, microwave, infra, UV, X-ray, gamma, and uh, you know, for their observation. Now, gravitational wave is another tool recently discovered, and since the first discovery of gravitational wave in 2015 through the black hole binary collision, now we have we have seen many more of discoveries of more gravitational waves. But you know. Frankly, from what I could understand, I cannot think of any more precise measurement in any f discipline of science or technology as much as what we require to measure a gravitational wave, which is the size of a proton or 10 raised to minus 18 meter, it's a kind of a disturbance on a 4 kilometer photon beam. 
and the source of these gravitational waves coming from millions of light years away and that you are trying to discover and that is one of the things we, Dr. Somak will be talking about today. The other puzzling thing I was talking to Dr. Somak is um, we non-scientists, we observe the night sky, looks calm, beautiful and unchanging. I was wondering is it really true, you know. I was, I was looking at the figures of the movement of the whole earth and galaxy. The earth rotates about 1600 kilometers per hour. The earth revolves around the sun, you know, if you look at the tangential speed at the center, at the circumference, it's about 107,000 kilometers per hour. The sun along with the earth moves around the galaxy at 70,000 kilometers per hour and the Milky Way galaxy itself is spinning on its axis at 792,000 kilometers per hour and of course the Milky Way galaxy is, is moving in, we do not know what, what frame of reference or what direction, that is about 2.1 million kilometers per hour. So you can see it is an amazing kind of a picture is what is happening in the universe. We had Dr. Somakurai Chaudhary today, one of the best scientists in the country today to explain why India as part of the international consortium is uh, investing in various astrophysics projects uh, globally as well as in India and what we hope to find and how do we make these observations of such precision. So before I introduce Dr. Somak and uh, he starts his talk, I think I will uh, request uh, Dr. Purva Barve to say a few things about ISER and some of the new initiatives here. Yeah.